Welcome once again to Understanding Your Bible. I'm glad that you've joined us for the Bible study today, and I hope that you'll take your Bible and uh, follow along with us in the Scriptures. If you don't have your Bible there handy, maybe you could take a pencil and a piece of paper and jot the Scriptures down and go back and look at these things after we finish. It's our intent to give you information that will help you to understand your Bible. Uh, I believe that there are certain keys that if you follow those things, the Bible is not a difficult book to understand. Many people consider the Bible some deep, dark, mysterious, mysterious, or mysterious book, and it's not really that at all. It's just that there are certain key principles to studying the Bible that make it easier to understand. The principle that we've been talking about, and we talk about, uh, I guess, every program, is the, the principle of rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, the Apostle Paul, when he wrote to Timothy, the young preacher, in the last book that Paul ever wrote, he told Timothy, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. That's 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. We have a chart up here, uh, and that's the verse that we use as the basis for uh, the, the doctrine that we call rightly dividing the word of truth, and it's 2 Timothy 2, 15. And what we mean by that is simply distinguishing between the kingdom doctrine back here in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John and the early part of Acts and the church doctrine which we find in Romans through Philemon. Hebrews through Revelation again will be kingdom doctrine that deals with the tribulation and millennial reign but the doctrine for the church the body of Christ is found in Romans through Philemon. Over the last several weeks we've been talking about the teachings of Christ and we put the emphasis on the fact that the teachings of Christ for today are found in Paul's epistles. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ spent three years teaching the twelve disciples to preach the gospel of the kingdom and to offer that kingdom to the nation Israel after his death. They did that in the first seven books of Acts, first seven or eight books of Acts, uh, or chapters of Acts. In chapter 9, the Apostle Paul is saved, and with the salvation of the Apostle Paul, we find that God starts something new. Last week we talked about the new organism, that is the body of Christ. And we, we talked about the fact and showed in the scriptures that that body is not the bride of Christ. The bride of Christ is a Jewish body. Uh, the body of Christ is made up of Jew and Gentiles and their salvation is by grace through faith. We saw in past studies that there was a new apostle. That apostle was the apostle Paul. There was a new gospel given. There was a new commission given. And there was a new organism that started with the Apostle Paul. He said that in me first he might show forth all long suffering. Now today, what I want to talk about is something else new that we find in this new revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's called the revelation of the mystery. In Romans chapter 16, as Paul concludes the letter to the Romans, the first one in the order of Paul's epistles... He says in verse 24, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is a power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began but now is made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. Paul says that we are to be established, number one, according to his gospel. Number two, the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Now, you know, everybody in Christianity preaches Jesus Christ. Uh, most people teach, teach a lot about the life of Jesus Christ, and it's wonderful to teach about the life of Christ. That was very important. But Paul said that we're to be established according to the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery. The mystery has to do with a body of truth that was revealed to the Apostle Paul by the Lord Jesus Christ. It included many things, uh, but primary was the gospel that was committed to Paul and the gospel that Paul preached. When Paul wrote to the Galatians, he said, I certify you, brethren that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Apostle Paul is saved in Acts chapter 9, 
And the Apostle Paul is given the revelation of the mystery. Paul said concerning the appearance of Jesus Christ in 1 Corinthians 15, he said, Last of all, he was seen of me as one born out of due time. In Acts 26, Paul is given an account of his salvation to Agrippa. And he says there in verse 15, And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, unto whom now I send thee. And so that's exactly what happened. God Almighty postponed His dealings with the nation Israel, postponed the tribulation period, the seventh week of Daniel. And so Paul's apostleship and Paul's epistles represent doctrine for a parenthetical period of time called the dispensation of the grace of God. When the fullness of the Gentiles has come in, that is when all the members of the body of Christ that are going to be saved are saved, this body is going to be removed from the earth and then God will resume His prophetic program. When you look through the New Testament and you look at the books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you'll find that that which took place there was according to Old Testament prophecy. Literally hundreds of prophecies were fulfilled concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. In Acts 2, when Peter is preaching on the day of Pentecost, he said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And so that information that was spoken by the prophet Joel was uh, prophetic information. And in Acts chapter 3, Peter talks about of the things that were being done in accordance with prophecy. Acts chapter 7, the message of Stephen, he goes all the way back and shows that how the nation Israel had always rejected God Almighty and then they stoned Stephen to death. Rather than God pouring out His wrath at that time, God saves the Apostle Paul and with that salvation begins the church which is his body. In Paul's epistles then we find in Romans through Philemon the doctrine for that church. And you do not find the doctrine for the church in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, even though we should read and study those books. You do not find the, church for, the doctrine for the church, the body of Christ, in Hebrews through Revelation. You find it in Paul's epistles, and it's called the revelation of the mystery. It includes the revelation of salvation. But notice in Ephesians chapter 3 what Paul says about this revelation. He says in Ephesians 3, 1, For this cause I, Paul the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ. Now notice, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now that is very important because what Paul is telling us there is that the things that are involved and included in the mystery doctrine were not included in the Old Testament Scriptures. He said, In other ages they were not made known unto the sons of men as it is now revealed unto His holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Paul says that this revelation of the mystery was given unto him. He said, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you. Well, then if the dispensation of the grace of God was given to the Apostle Paul, we know that the dispensation of the grace of God did not exist prior to the Apostle Paul. And that is obvious when you begin to read and study the Scriptures and you begin to rightly divide the word of truth. Not only that, he says, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery. In other words, it was given to the Apostle Paul. He says, in other ages it was not made known. It is now revealed. And he says what that mystery is in verse 6, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Now, there's a lot of confusion among people today about what this mystery really is. And Paul makes it clear what this mystery is. He said that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body, partakers of his promise in Christ 
by the gospel. And that is a very important aspect of this mystery revelation that was given to the Apostle Paul. That's why I read Galatians chapter 1. I certify you, brother, the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. All the truth of the revelation of the mystery centers around the gospel, the good news of the grace of God. I want you to notice back in Matthew chapter 25. You see, many times people simply uh, say that the mystery is that Gentiles would be saved. But that is not at all uh, the, the case. Uh, Gentiles' salvation was promised from the very beginning. In Genesis chapter 12, when God Almighty first called out Abraham, He said, Abraham, I'm going to bless your seed, and I'll bless those that bless thee. Well, then salvation was not only to the nation Israel, but it was those to those that blessed Israel. You'll find an uh, illustration of that in Matthew chapter 15 in Luke chapter 7. Uh, but in Matthew 25, you find that there is a judgment of the Gentiles. Uh, in verse 31, the Bible says, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with them, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory, and before Him shall be gathered all nations, and He shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And He shall set the sheep on His right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Notice, for I was hungry and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. Naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw thee we a hungred and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw thee we a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw thee we sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and you visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, Lord, when saw thee we a hungry, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did not do it unto one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous in the life eternal." Now, this is a judgment of Gentile nations, and the judgment is on the basis of how they treated the nation Israel. Because people do not rightly divide the word of truth, there is a great misunderstanding today about blessing Israel. Our country puts our, our, our political leaders put a lot of interest, uh, a lot of emphasis upon blessing the nation Israel. But listen, folks, when the nation Israel rejected the Lord Jesus Christ, there in Acts chapter 7, the nation Israel began to be cast away and be fallen. And today, they are in the position that was prophesied in the book of Hosea, that is, lo am I. That means not God's people. The nation Israel today are not God's people. Now, there's going to come a time when God is going to renew His working and His dealing with the nation Israel. But today, in the dispensation of the grace of God, people are not saved by blessing Israel. People are not saved by doing good works toward the nation Israel. And Matthew chapter 25 has nothing to do uh, with the salvation or with our blessing today. It has to do with a time period when nation Israel, the nation Israel is going to be in great trouble and those nations that help them will be blessed, as in Matthew 25. And he said, if I, I was hungry, you fed. They said, when? He said, inasmuch as you've done it unto one of the least of these my brethren. Well, his brethren were Jews. They were not Gentiles. These were Gentiles that were blessing the seed of Abraham, blessing Jewish people. That has nothing to do with salvation in the dispensation of the grace of God. So the revelation of the mystery is the body of truth that was given to the Apostle Paul, and the foundational truth for that was the gospel of the grace of God. 
But there was to be more to it than that. As a matter of fact, when we read back there in Acts chapter 26, and Paul is given an account of his salvation before Agrippa, he said there uh, that the Lord told him that he was going to deliver him from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. And notice what his ministry was to include. It says, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light. It's interesting that the Apostle Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4 that the devil had blinded the minds of them which believed not, lest the light of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. So the ministry of the Apostle Paul was to open people's eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. All of that comes about as a result of an individual believing the gospel of the grace of God. Paul said, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So the, the importance of acknowledging and understanding the revelation of the mystery is that we would preach the right gospel. You see, to tell people today that there is some blessing to them by blessing the nation Israel is simply misleading them. Uh, what we need to be telling people today is that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses to them. This body of truth called the mystery starts with the preaching of the gospel, the gospel of the grace of God. That good news is 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. He was buried and he was raised again the third day according to the scriptures. Paul said, I am not ashamed of this gospel, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone that believeth. He said that the devil has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of this glorious gospel should shine unto them. So people are saved today by believing Paul's gospel. He called it my gospel there in Romans 16, where we started out today. What is that gospel? Again, it's the, it's the truth of what Christ did on Calvary. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5, he said, God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses. Colossians 2.13, he hath forgiven you all trespasses. So the good news of the gospel is that salvation has been made available to all men on the basis of the gospel. That's why when he wrote to the Ephesians, in Ephesians chapter 2, he said in verse 11, Wherefore remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision of the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the comforts of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Say, so, but I thought it was by the gospel. Well, obviously it is. But the gospel proclaims what Christ did uh, in our behalf. The gospel proclaims that we are saved by grace, through faith, by the blood of Christ. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, "...in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace." Now, very briefly, I want to mention to you some of the things that are involved in this mystery doctrine. Paul said that we're to preach Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. That is, that through the Apostle Paul, there were going to be things revealed about the Lord Jesus Christ and about His body that were never revealed anywhere else in the Scriptures. Uh, one of those things has to do with the mystery of the catching away of the church. Now, I'll tell you, there's a lot of people today that have forsaken the doctrine of the rapture, what we call the rapture. And I understand that the word rapture is not in the Bible. It's a word that means the catching, catching away. And so I generally refer to it as the catching away, but uh, also use the word rapture. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 51, Paul said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, this is a doctrine. This is another part of the mystery uh, that Paul talks about that is different from what was talked about in the book of Matthew, Mark, books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. For example, many people mistake the doctrine of Matthew chapter 24 as the rapture for the church, the body of Christ. That over there in Matthew 24, where there's two in the field, one's taken, the other left, one is taken in judgment. 
and the other is left. And the fact is that when Paul writes, he says, I show you a mystery. You see, the hope of Israel and the hope of the saved has always been resurrection. But what Paul is revealing in 1 Corinthians 15 as well as in 1 Thessalonians 4 is the fact that now in the dispensation of the grace of God, the church, the body of Christ, has a hope far greater than simply being resurrected from the dead. And that hope is that we wouldn't have to die, that we would experience resurrection without dying. He says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In other words, prior to that, the only way to experience resurrection was through death. But today, because we're in the body of Christ and God is going to remove this body from the earth before he returns and begins dealing with the nation Israel through the seventh week of Daniel, the tribulation period, we have the hope of resurrection without even dying. That is, being caught up in the clouds. And because we have passed the year 2000, and things did not happen as many people predicted and prophesied through the years about the rapture coming in the year 2000 or, or seven years uh, before that or, 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 and all these different philosophies. Many people have turned away from this doctrine and yet it is a sound, basic Bible doctrine when you rightly divide the word of truth. I know there are those that do not preach the rapture and teach the rapture as doctrine. They teach that there's not going to be a rapture. Well, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4 makes it clear that we're going to be caught up with him. Paul said he's going to change our vile body, fashion it like unto his glorious body, and so we thank God for that hope. There's the mystery of his rapture. Then there's the mystery of his will. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9, Paul says, Having made known unto us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he hath purposed in himself. That has to do with the following verses there in Ephesians when he says that in the dispensation of the fullness of time, he's going to gather together uh, all things. And we looked at that last week. When he gathers together all things, that's at the very end. That's after all time has been fulfilled. And the church, the body of Christ, will be united with the bride of Christ. They're not the same, but they will be one. He'll gather together all things in Christ, and we'll all live in the new heaven and the new earth in perfect harmony uh, and in the very state that God intended when he put Adam and Eve here to begin with. Then there's the mystery of Christ in the church. Uh, we talked about that last week as well. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ in the church. He said we're bone of his bone, flesh of his flesh. There's the mystery of the gospel. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 19, he said, And pray for me that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. You see, the gospel that Paul preached was not preached prior to the apostle Paul being given it. It was not preached by Peter, James, and John. They preached a gospel, but it was called the gospel of the kingdom. It was the good news that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. While Paul also believed that Jesus Christ was the Messiah, and he also preached the resurrection of Jesus Christ as being proof of that, but Paul went beyond that and he laid the foundation by preaching the gospel of the grace of God. He calls it the mystery of the gospel. What was it hidden in that gospel? That what was hidden in that gospel was, uh, that was revealed through Paul, was that Jew and Gentile would be saved in one body, not by blessing Israel, but by trusting in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ on Calvary. Now, you know, whether people acknowledge this mystery or not, everybody saved today, everybody that's saved in the body of Christ got saved by believing Paul's gospel. He calls it my gospel in Romans 16. He calls it my gospel in Romans chapter 2. He calls it my gospel in 1 Timothy. Uh, it is Paul's gospel. And there is no salvation today apart from believing that gospel that Christ died for our sins, was buried and raised again, and trusted in Him. So there's the mystery of the gospel. And then there's the mystery of Christ and God. He says in Colossians 2, 2, that their hearts might be comforted, be knit together in love, unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father, and of, the Christ, and of Christ. Uh, Paul talks about in 1 Timothy chapter 3, the mystery of the faith. Uh, you see, folks, all of these things, have to do with this body of truth that was given to the Apostle Paul. This new body of truth, this body of truth is 
the, these are the teachings of Christ for the, body, for the dispensation of the grace of God and for the body of Christ. The teachings of Christ today are found in Romans through Philemon. It's called the revelation of the mystery. It was given to the Apostle Paul and it was not re revealed prior to him. The teachings of Christ to the twelve, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, first part of Acts, those teachings are carried out. Acts 9, Paul is saved and is then and is given the revelation of the mystery. And so that revelation is the doctrine for the church, the body of Christ. Salvation, the rapture, and all the things concerning our blessings are found in Paul's epistles. If you're not saved today, the only way you can be saved is by believing the gospel of the grace of God, not the gospel of the kingdom, repent and be baptized. The way you're saved today is believe that Christ died for your sins and that you have to trust Him and Him alone without any work of the flesh. Water baptism, join the church, walk in the aisle won't do it. The only thing that will bring about salvation today is for you to trust in the finished work of Jesus Christ and rest in what he did at Calvary. Trust in him and him alone, and he'll save you. Grace Bible Church extends to you and your family a cordial invitation to join us for our Sunday services. Bible classes begin at 10 a.m. with morning service at 11 and informal evening Bible study at 6 p.m. For more information, phone 847-0768. Thank you for joining us for this edition of Understanding Your Bible. For more information, write to the address on your screen or call 423-847-0768. Be sure to be with us again next week for another edition of Understanding Your Bible.